Hi, uh, this is John Black, Super Chemist. Uh, this is a very easy, simple uh, reaction. Uh, basically, I'm going to get some drain cleaner, sulfuric acid, you see here. Put it in the separatory funnel so I can drip it in. Actually, it's an equalizing funnel. Uh, down in the pot, I'm going to have vodka, 80 proof. And I'm just going to drip it in to make this stuff here. It goes by many names, but basically, it's the ethyl sulfate ester. And uh, just like an ethyl acetate ester is the ester using a carboxylic acid, you're just using a mineral acid. That's all. It's the only difference. Here's a picture of it. And uh, I'm not exactly sure. Now, that's what you're making when you drip it in. After I drip it in, I'm going to take my sodium bromide, and I'm going to add it into the pot. I'm going to take this off or plug it up. And I basically, you can see, I got it set up for distillation already. A bigger X column, thermometer, my condenser, water in, water out, and my receiving flask. And I'm just going to boil everything out. And that's basically it. From, um, I'm not sure exactly what the mechanism is, although I am going to do this with hydrobromic acid, and I do know the mechanism for that. Uh, but this one, you're making this uh, sulfavinic acid first. So I'm not sure. Maybe the bromide comes up, attacks here, uh, electrons move to there, and this comes off, and you got this sodium uh, salt. Um, I don't know. I'm not exactly sure. If anyone knows, hey, give me a post and let me know. We're here to make some ethyl bromide. Uh, you can see my apparatus. I have 146 milliliters of 80 proof, 40% vodka, ethanol, in the pot. Up here, I have some, some uh, sulfuric acid, 66 milliliters. Uh, it's concentrated. Uh, that's a mole and a quarter. Um, I'll keep everything cold, keep it down, drip rate slow, and just basically drip that into there. Um, I kept it under 15 degrees Celsius the entire time. Uh, there's my uh, ethyl hydrogen sulfate. Uh, basically, all I'm going to do is add in my salt, my sodium bromide. I have uh, half a mole, 51.5 grams. And uh, when I add it, uh, very little happens, a little bit of bubbling, no temperature rise or anything like that. Um, but when I start to heat it up, uh, it does turn to a yellow uh, due to the sulfuric acid. See there? It oxidizes it to bro bromine and uh, gives it that little bit of color. It will turn orange later on. You can see my bubbler there, it's working. Uh, but it will turn oranger and then almost red at the very end. I'm glad I only used a half a mole of the sodium bromide because uh, you can see even at the boiling point there, it's still most of it is not in solution. It's still solid there. It's, I can't get my stir, stir rod to work very good. Uh, so I'm glad I only did put a half a mole in there. And there's my bubbler again. You can see it working. So I don't have to breathe anything that comes out of there. There's how, how dark it got. I want you to watch this front here. You can see that it just barely goes over there. You can barely see the line. But if you go over it a couple times, rewind it, you can see it's... That's where you want to be distilling at. And I distilled, uh, I started at uh, 38 uh, degrees, went all the way up to 78 degrees Celsius. And that's the boiling point of ethanol and ethanol water azeotrope. Both, both boil around 78 degrees. So once I hit there, I stopped the distillation. Uh, basically, all I'm doing is I'm just distilling that out. It was a pretty good distillation. I didn't go too fast or too slow. There's a drip rate. And... Uh, like I said, uh, it started out around 38 degrees. I took it all the way up to the uh, 78. Now there's the receiving flash. You can see where the line is. It's right below the 50 milliliter markings. Um, the bottom part is the ethyl bromide, and the top part is like uh, the ethanol and water and stuff like that. And you can see the pot cleared up. Remember how it was red? Um, now there's no more. You know that you used up all the bromide because... Uh, the coloring is gone. So I'm going to throw everything in, in, from the receiving flask into this separating funnel. I want to add some, clean out the round bottom flask it was in with some really ice cold water. 
I'll shake that up, let it sit for about 10, 15, 20 minutes, let it separate out. Uh, I'm going to take out the bottom layer, which is what I want. And the top layer, I'm not going to have to worry about. It's just going to be discarded. That's just garbage. That'll be like your ethanol, water, uh, any sulfuric acid that came over. Now I'm going to put the ethyl bromide back into the flat, into the separating funnel. And this time I'm going to add some uh, sodium bicarbonate or baking soda. And just in case any sulfuric acid is in there, it'll get rid of it. Uh, shake it up, let it sit 20, 30 minutes. And you can see ethyl bromide is real volatile. So I put my, when I'm letting it sit, I put it in a nice bath. So anyways, I drain out the bottom layer, which is what I want. Top layer I discard, put the ethyl bromide back into the separating flask or separating funnel. And this time I'm going to put salt water in to get rid of any, any residual water that may be in there. Shake it up, let it sit 10, 20, 30 minutes in the uh, ice bath. And then that's the last wash. Uh, I'm going to, oh, and here's another thing. You put, if you want to put it in your freezer where your food's at, Maybe put it in a, a Ziploc bag, make sure it's Ziplocked up and upright. See, I'll have it in the box jammed in there so it uh, won't fall over. But that's not for long-term use, you know what I mean? You can't, can't, I wouldn't trust it. So anyways, here's my product. I'm taking out the bottom layer. And uh, it's still going to have trace amounts of water. So I'm going to get some anhydrous magnesium sulfate. I'm going to toss it in there. I'm going to stir it up a little bit and let it sit 20, 30 minutes till it's clear. As you can see, I got uh, 26 milliliters is my uh, yield. Um, that's a 70% yield because 37 milliliters is the th theoretical yield. Um, so I got a 70% yield. Uh, it's my second try, so it wasn't bad, um, although I should be better. Um, I did do this experiment again, kind of. What was left inside the pot, I just took it, and I got another half mox uh, of sodium bromide, and I put it into the pot. Now, this pot, you know, a lot of the sulfuric acid and ethanol is gone. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's dilute acid, and uh, so it's not obviously going to give me a good, uh, good product, you know, not a good yield. So I put it in there, and just like before, I'm going to uh, distill out between 38 and 78 degrees. I'm going to wash that with water, cold water, then uh, get the acid out with some sodium bisulf, I mean sodium bicarbonate, and then wash the water out with salt water, I'm getting uh, 20 milliliters. Uh, now that would be a 54% uh, yield on the sodium bromide. So obviously that's a terrible yield. Uh, but like I said, the, the acid was real dilute by then. And uh, I just wanted to see what I would get out of it. I took the 20 milliliters and I took the 26 milliliters that it added up to 46 milliliters. I took that and I put it in a, a distillation uh, set up with a Vigorex column and I distilled it and everything came over between 38 and 38.8 degrees Celsius. Uh, so that was pretty good. I did leave a milliliter or two inside the pot, uh, which is good because